person tonight. I need you to turn, find a neighbor, find a neighbor, find a neighbor. Say, neighbor, tonight is finna. Some of y'all didn't say that right. Some of y'all said, is fix it. Finna, finna. Say, neighbor, tonight is finna. Be wild. God bless you. God bless you. All right, go find your seats. Hey, welcome to everybody online. What's up? Shout out to you. Thank you for joining us. We're so glad you're here. If you're in the chat right now, just put a fire emoji. Type it in the chat. Say, tonight is finna be wild. It's finna be wild. Um, I'm so glad to be with you tonight. I'm so glad to be with you tonight. And uh, if it is, uh, we'll let everybody find your seats. Hey, if you're online, um, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're so grateful that you're here, wherever you're watching from. You may be, it may be 4 a.m. where you're watching. And shout out to you, because you really love Jesus. And, uh, but we're so glad you're here. And before we jump into uh, tonight, I gotta take a moment and uh, just tell you how special this place is. Like, you may not realize it. Like, you, sometimes you don't realize how special stuff is when you're in it, but this is so special. I was sitting right over there with my wife, and I was thinking, bro, if my youth group was this dope when I was in youth group, I'm like, bro, seriously, you, my youth group was dope like then, but if it was this dope, I probably would have given my life to Jesus a lot earlier than I did, honestly. Um, but no, seriously, this place is so amazing and uh, you need to know you're a part of something that's changing the trajectory of church. Like, um, and... Uh, Tim and Rebecca, y'all are, y'all are amazing, seriously. Like, this is, can you give it up? Don't, no, like, you can do better than that. Can you give it up? Come on! I'm about to throw this chair at you. You're amazing. Seriously, you have no, you can sit down now. You have no idea um, building something like this doesn't happen on accident, and it doesn't happen without sacrifice. And there are things that I know that I don't know that you guys have had to go through and deal with and prayers that you've prayed. Um, and uh, I'm just grateful to see something that is really impacting uh, the next generation. And to be a part of it today is actually crazy. Um, and uh, man, this church is so special. It's blessed me. And this moment right here is really just for me. You're like, Charles, what are you doing? Just get on with the sermon. But um, man, I grew up in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Bowling Green, Kentucky. You don't know where that is, and you don't need to know where that is. But um, I grew up in a church of like 10 people. I was related to like seven of them. And the other three, we don't know who they were. They were just weird. They kept coming back. Um, but moments like this just remind me that many are the plans of a man's heart, but God's purpose always prevails. And uh, no matter where you are tonight, no matter what um, your experience with church is, um, you need to know that God has a specific and unique purpose for your life. Um, and without you, there's something in the earth that is missing. I need you to hear that. Without you, without you, there's something in the earth that is missing. There's something that the world needs. There's something that people are waiting on. There's something that, that, that is needed by the world and you hold it. And uh, I said that earlier, but your God's dream come true. And he put that thing on the inside of you. And uh, I'm excited to be with you tonight. Tonight's going to be a fun night. Y'all ready to have fun? All right, all right, all right. Um, so before I jump in, my name is Charles. I didn't introduce myself. What's up? Uh, Charles Henry Metcalf III, just to be clear. Uh, my mama said, don't call me Chuck. Don't call me Charlie. His name is Charles. If I wanted to call you Chuck, I would have named you Chuck. But I didn't name you Chuck. I named you Charles. So my name is Charles. Don't call me Chuck. If you do, you got to take it up with my mama. Um, but... Um, I am from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I uh, work at Transformation Church with Pastor Michael Todd. And, and uh, I'm married to my amazing wife, Abby Rose, who's right over here looking fine and pregnant. Y'all get this. She has been pregnant since 2018. We're working on our third kid. That's actually true. We we have our two little babies. I think we have a picture of my family. I think is it up here? Do we have a picture? Look at those beautiful. Now here's the creepy thing. That looks like a, a then and now photo, but that's not what that is. That's my baby boy Arlo. That's Luna uh, on the left, and then that's me and my wife when I had shaved hair and looked like a prison inmate. But anyways, uh, 
But yeah, we have Arlo Phoenix, who's two and a half. Luna Rose, who is, uh, how old is Luna? Luna's about to turn one next week. Jesus, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And then we got another baby girl on the way that'll be in here in October. They're amazing. They're really the only thing I care about, no cap. Like, this is going to be great. I hope it helps you. But I just grew up hoping to be a dad one day and a husband. And I did those things, so I could die happy right now. Um, but are you ready for the word tonight? You ready for the word? Okay, I'm going to read uh, out of the Bible. Uh, you guys read it out of the Bible here. Y'all do the Bible. The Bible's pretty dope. Okay, here's, here's what we're going to do. I got something crazy. Um, who has an actual physical Bible? If you have a real Bible, you're the first person I saw. Okay, after service, I need, I'm going to find you. I'm going to cash up you $100 because you have a real Bible. So that's true. Congratulations in the blue shirt. Real, but somebody's like, I should have brought my mom's Bible. God. She was like, sweetie, take my Bible. I'm like, mom, nobody brings real Bibles. You played yourself. Um, okay, so Matthew 28 is where we're going to be. Uh, Matthew 28, we'll start in verse 18. Uh, this is the amazing word of God. This is what it says. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, my dad was always say, when you see it, therefore, you ask, what's that therefore? It's a dumb joke anyways. <laughs> Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commandments I have given you. This is where I want to focus. And be sure of this. You can bet on this. Believe this. I am with you even to the end of the age. Oh, I lost all my pieces of paper. Um, the title of my sermon tonight, if you're taking notes, I would encourage you to take notes because it's like a fast pass when you get to heaven. You ever been to Six Flags and you had a fast pass? Like there's people waiting in the line and you're like, bloop, bloop, and they let you right in. You show them your notes to this sermon, they're going to let you right in, I promise. Uh, the title of the sermon is To Be or Not To Be. To Be or Not To Be. Could you join me? Could we pray real quick? And uh, we're going to jump right into this thing. Holy Spirit, this is your service. We, we have plans. We have ideas. The team has done an amazing job putting programming together, and we've had an amazing time of worship, and we've gathered together, and we're here in this moment, but it's not to hear me talk. It's not to just um, be in a room and stream it for a long amount of hours, Lord God. It's because we need an encounter with the only person who can heal our hearts. We need to meet with the one who created us. We just need some time with you. And uh, right now, I'm asking that you would talk to your children through me. I get out of the way. Um, I cancel my plans. And I just hope right now in these moments, somebody would hear your voice um, as if you were right next to them. That you would answer prayers that they haven't told anybody. That you would heal wounds that they don't even know that are there. And that your spirit would become evident through these moments. Lord, I thank you for every student in this room. I thank you that there's a powerful, powerful call on their life. Um, that they have been designed with beauty and intention and with a specific uh, idea in mind. And I pray that tonight you would just reveal a part of that to them. It's in the beautiful name of Jesus we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. Um, so I grew up in, uh, in, in, I said that in Bowling Green, Kentucky. We moved around a little bit and I uh, played basketball. Has anybody ever here played basketball before? You play basketball? If you haven't played basketball, it's all right. Um, here's a question I want to actually start with. Have you ever been under pressure? Raise your hand if you've ever been under pressure. Like just an intense moment, you know, you might be sweating a little bit. We've got any palm sweaters in here? I dated a girl one time, her palms sweat real bad. And I'm not going to lie, I said God told me to break up with her, but it was the palms. I really reason I broke up with her. Uh, don't blame God on stuff. Just tell him. You know, that was bad. I probably did a lot of bad damage there. But anyways, um, uh, so I, there's this one moment when I think about pressure that I'm reminded of, and I get a little anxious talking about it right now. Um, I was in eighth grade, and uh, I played basketball for Davidson Academy. Davidson Academy, I was a point guard, and we had our arch uh, nemesis, our team that we hated. I actually got in a fight with the other point guard on this team uh, in the middle of the game. We played them every year since sixth grade. So every year we would play them twice. It was called Good Pasture was the name of the team. We played them sixth grade, seventh grade, and this was eighth grade year. So we had played them multiple times, and every single year we went back and forth who won. They would win the first game, we would win the second game, and then they would win the next year and went back and forth. And so this is my eighth grade year. This is before we go into high school, and uh, we're about to play Good Pasture for the second time this year. 
And we get down to the end of the game, and it's a tight game, and I'm going off. You know, I was Allen Iverson back then. I used to cut my, before they made sleeves, because I was super short. Like, eighth grade, I was barely five foot tall. So they didn't make sleeves like Allen Iverson. If you don't know who Allen Iverson is, Google it. Um, but he's a basketball player. He wore a sleeve on his arm, and they didn't make sleeves that would fit me. So I would chop off the top of my dad's dress socks, and I was wearing a dress sock on my arm, but I was a thug, and I had a headband. So... Um, Anyways, I'll dunk on any of y'all right now. Come on. Um, but I'm playing, and it's going, and it's the end of the game, and we're down by three. We're down by three, and it's the end of the game, and I'm like, okay. The coach gives me the ball. He draws up a play. He's like, Charles, this is on you. You got this. And I was like, all right, bet. Here we go. So we draw up the play. I cross the guy over. I drive. This is literally a movie. As I'm shooting the shot, I get fouled. The clock goes, man. And the layup, it's like rolling, and it rolls in, and everybody's like, ah! And guess what I start doing? I start bawling, crying. I immediately, I was like, oh, my God. I'm going to have to shoot these free throws. Because here's the thing. I was horrible at free throws. So we're down by one. I have two free throws to shoot. If I make one, we tie the game. If I make both, we win it, I get the girl, I ride off into the sunset. I'm the gangster of the eighth grade school. I get up to the free throw line, and I'm doing the ugly cry. You know what the one you're like. <laughs> and I'm literally, it's so embarrassing. At this point, I'm like, this is ridiculous. You should just leave. Just don't even shoot the free throws. I do my little routine, shoot the first one. I bricked it, just shot off real bad. And so at this point, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go die. This is not, this is not going to work. I'm just panicking. I'm panicking. I'm like, okay, just make one. You can make one shot. Like, you can do it. Just calm down, Charles. My dad literally, this is so embarrassing. He's literally like, Charles, calm down. He's like up in the stage. He's like, take a breath, son. You're okay. Calm down. I'm like doing my little dribble routine. I shoot the second free throw. You guessed it. I bricked it. We lose the game. <laughs> it, was, it was devastating. It was very devastating. So devastating that I quit basketball. <laughs> no cap. That's a real, this is real childhood trauma we're talking about today. I didn't play on an official basketball team ever again. Because in that moment, um, I missed my moment. Like, this was it. This was the moment where if you're really built for this stuff, if you're really about it, if you really got it in you, you would have made those shots. And the pressure of the moment got to me. I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. And really, it wasn't the pressure of um, the school. It wasn't the pressure of my friends who were watching. It wasn't even the pressure of the crowd. Um, it was something I want to talk about tonight, which is the pressure of potential. You see, what was so nerve-wracking was not that I was going to shoot the shot, but that I was good enough to make the shot. The pressure was not that I wasn't good enough. It was the fact that I actually was good enough. It was that. And it was our, my greatest fear was not that I wasn't good enough to make the shot. My greatest fear was that I had the potential to make the shot. I was the only person who would have been most qualified to be in that moment, and I still didn't live up to my potential. And I think many of us, our greatest fear is not that there's not greatness on the inside of us, but maybe it's that I feel like there's something actually there, and the greatest fear would not be that nothing's there, but that it is, and I never reach my potential. I never, I never reach it. I never reach my potential, because if I don't reach my potential, I'll never reach my purpose. You see... They say the graveyard is the richest place because it's full of purpose never reached. It's full of ideas. It's full of solutions. It's full of, of problems to be solved. It's full of people who had potential. But the pressure of the moment, the pressures of life, they didn't end up reaching their potential. And I always felt like through life that if I didn't reach my potential, I, I would never reach my purpose. 
If you, can't, if you can't live up to this moment, if you can't make two free throws, you'll never do anything bigger than that. You'll never reach what you're really supposed to do if you can't even live up to your potential, if you can't even do what the thing is you're supposed to do. You can't, you can't even pass that grade. You can't even get a, a friends to like you. You'll never be married. You can't, you can't get somebody to, to follow you. You'll never be influential. You can't, you can't get outside of that neighborhood. You'll never graduate. There are things inside of us that I want to talk about the pressure of your potential. I want to be very clear. Some of you feel like, man, that's not me because I, I don't feel like there's greatness on the inside of you. Can I tell you, you don't have a choice but to have greatness on the inside of you. You may not recognize it, but you, you don't have a choice because the King of Kings formed you. The, the Lord of Lords put his DNA on the inside of you. There's no choice but greatness to be on the inside of you. You just wake up with greatness. Live, Take a breath. That's greatness on the inside of you. He said he breathed his breath into Adam. There are certain things my boy Arlo has in him, not because he chose it. Not because he decided at two years old, I'm going to have curly hair. Not because at two years old, he decided that I'm gonna, when I get loud, I'm going to get a little country. I don't know how. He just got it in his DNA because of who his dad is. You have greatness on the inside of you, whether you recognize it or not. And the fear of many of us is, is that we would have the potential to be great. We'd have the potential to do a lot of things, but we wouldn't reach our purpose. I want to talk about this word purpose for a moment. This is a big word. This is a word that plagues a lot of us. Purpose. What, what is purpose? What is my purpose? Why was I created? Why was I born? Why was I born into that family at this time? What is my purpose? Mark Twain, he says that the two greatest days of someone's life is the day they're born and the day they figure out why. You see, purpose is one of those things that plagues humanity, and, and it's really one of the questions that all of us have on the inside of us. You're at YouthX, you're, you're watching wherever you're watching from, and you're thinking, what, 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 there's something in this moment, I want to figure out why I was born, or, or what's on the inside of me, or what am I going to do for God? And I was talking to God one day, I was, God was like, why is purpose one of the biggest things that we all struggle with? Why is the world asking, what is my purpose? Why does it seem so difficult? And God said so clearly, he said, Charles, purpose isn't difficult, but it is different. You see, there are things that we perceive as difficult, but they're not difficult, they're just different. There are some of you that where you live, you drive on the other side of the road than where we do in America. And I would think that's insane to drive on that side of the road. But it's not insane, it's just different. And because it's different, it's perceived as I could never do that. Purpose is not difficult, but it is different. It's different than the pattern of this world. It's different than how your family raised you. It's different than how your uncle and them told you it would go. It's different than what your teacher said. It's different than what your coach said. It is different because they didn't form it. They didn't create you. They didn't form you before you were in your mother's womb. So they can't speak to your purpose. So when we find ourselves under the pressure of potential and trying to reach our purpose, we have to stop and ask, what is purpose really? What is purpose really? And, and I found that many times, and, and even after I missed two free throws, after I failed in the pressure of potential, I went into performing mode. I wasn't on the team, but I went into the mode of, I'm going to show you, like I won't be on the team, but catch me at P.E., and bet that I will hit every shot in your face because I'm going to show you what I can do. And many of us find ourselves in a place where because we feel like there's greatness, we're in this mode of doing and performing and proving that, no, there is greatness on the inside of me. And I can be different and I won't be like my dad who left my family. And I want, I'll be different and I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what's on the inside of me and... Um, the issue with potential that I have, and I just want to talk about potential for a moment, because I always thought the goal was to reach your potential. I always thought, like, my coaches say, Charles, you've got a lot of potential. And what they were saying is there's a lot of possibility. There's a lot you could do. And I always thought I was supposed to reach my potential. 
I always thought that potential was the thing that was like, don't leave anything on the inside of you that's undone. Don't you got to die empty? All these different things. And I started asking myself, am I supposed to reach my potential? Like, I know this is kind of throwing you off right now, but do you know Jesus did not reach his potential? But let's talk about what is potential. Potential is everything you could do. Everything you could do that is on the inside of you. So how much does the creator of the universe have on the inside of him that he could do? He comes to this earth. He lives a perfect life. At 30, he starts doing ministry. How much potential does Jesus have at 30 as fully God and fully man? How many miracles could Jesus have done? He could have snapped his fingers and everybody. He, Jesus could have done a lot, but Jesus did not reach his potential. Jesus died on the cross not having reached his potential. I know this is messing with some of your theology, but, but, but Jesus fulfilled his purpose, not his potential. And many of us are walking around trying to fulfill our potential. And here's the bad thing about it. We use scriptures to fulfill our potential. First, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But are you supposed to be doing all things? All things? I can do, yeah. and what we think it says is anything. I can do anything I want in the name of God because I'm going to reach my but are you supposed to be doing all things? Because all things can get out of hand. COVID, all things. People were starting all types of podcasts and people was out here doing Zoom trainings. And I know you ain't even good at that. Now you got a Zoom class and we can pay $3.99 to get in your class. <laughs> all things. Can I tell you, your purpose and potential are not the same. Just because you could do it doesn't mean you should do it. There's a lot of things that Jesus could have done on this earth. There are a lot of th miracles Jesus could have done, but there were specific assignments that Jesus had, and he died knowing that I don't have to reach my potential if I fulfill my purpose. If I fulfill my purpose, Jesus had a specific purpose on this earth. And many of us are so distracted and so anxious because of your potential. All the stuff you could be doing. Man, well, am I supposed to, I could be going to this school or I could be, I could be playing that sport or am I supposed to play this sport or am I supposed to, I'm smart and I can play sports. Okay, I'm supposed to be smart and I'm supposed to be doing this and this is what my family's always done and so I'm supposed to go over here and we're anxious and we're praying all these prayers to God of can I do this or should I do that or can I do both or I don't know if, it, and we're anxious trying to do something that Jesus didn't do? You, Jesus didn't reach his potential. And that messed with me, y'all, because it meant that there was stuff I could do that was good, but it wasn't God. Oh, you didn't know there's a lot of good stuff going on that ain't God. Here's, let me help you. The difference between potential, potential is everything you could do. Purpose are the things God has graced you to do. I want to help you because nobody explained this to me when I was your age. Nobody talked to me about there are things that just in your natural ability you could do, but then there are certain things that God has graced you to do. There are certain things that there is a unique assignment on your life. There's a unique favor that when you do it, it seems easy to you, but everybody else is like, oh my gosh, that is crazy. How do you do that? Those things that you think, oh, I just kind of thought about that or you don't think that way. Those are the things God has graced you to do. But because you have talent, because you have other, there are other things that you just could do. And this is the moment where a lot of believers, a lot of students, myself, was distracted by good things that weren't God. You know everybody's not called to be a missionary, right? But that's a good thing. But sometimes it's not the graced thing for you. You know, there are a lot of great, good-looking people in the world, but you're not graced for all of them. You're graced to be with one of them. There are a lot of 
There are girls, there may be a lot of good looking dudes at your school, but just because it's good doesn't mean it's God. There are a lot, some of y'all, multi-sport athletes, there are a lot of good, you could go play basketball, football, do tennis, and you could do all of it, but there's, some, there's, there's one area that God has graced you to do. Now, the, the million-dollar question is, um, so I'm not supposed to reach my potential. Okay, that, that sounds insane, but okay, I'll go with you on that. I'm, not, I'm supposed to fulfill my purpose. So what is my purpose? Well, I think um, with the scripture of um, Philippians 4.13, we use this scripture to kind of just do whatever. Like, this is the scripture that you write on the side of your shoes, that you slap above your, uh, your, your, your team. You walk out, you're like, yeah, we do all things through Christ. And it's like, man, you didn't practice. Y'all are probably going to lose that game. It's not God's fault. Uh, <laughs> like, that was me. I was like, yeah, we do all things. It's like, no, you're not that good, man. Like, you can't do this. They're better than you. Um, and then you're like, God, where are you? And he's like, you're just not good. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not my fault. You're short. Like, it's just, it's just how it rolled out. Um, But the reason that we have to talk about the difference between potential and purpose is because the pattern of the world follows potential. The pattern of the world follows that you should do everything you could do. This is where you get hustle culture. This is where you are grinding. This is where you better make money where you can. This is where you, like, this is the culture of, yeah, do everything. You got a marketing thing. I got this Instagram. I got three different things I'm doing on the side. And the problem is the focus of potential is doing. It's just, it's just doing a lot. But if potential is doing, is your purpose doing? Now, these are questions, some of you are looking at me like, what are you talking about? These are, I, I, these are questions that you have to ask. Is my purpose, what God created me to do, is the foundation of it what I can do for God? Is purpose about doing? I just got to ask this question, and there's a story actually in Luke um, 10 that I want to look at of um, th- a couple of great godly people that were on their way somewhere doing stuff for God. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. It says, one day an expert of religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question, teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? He starts off there, and then he says, uh, let me tell you this story. He goes and he says, a Jewish man traveled from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, and they beat him. A priest came along, probably had some good stuff to do, probably was on his way to pray for somebody, probably was on his way to talk to God, probably was on his way to do something for God. But he saw a man lying there who had been beaten up, and he crossed on the other side of the road. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, and he also passed by. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and he stopped to be with him. And I look at this scripture, and I think, let's just, we always paint uh, the priest and and the, the other guy as bad people, but they were doing stuff for God. Like, they were... God, I am, I'm the priest. I got, I got responsibilities. I got things to do. So I know someone's hurting, but I have something to do. And Jesus is drawing a contrast. And the question I have to ask you, is your purpose about what you can do? Because a lot of us are focused, even in this moment. You're thinking, after youth X is over, I'm about to go do all this for God. Cool. I want you to do all of it for God. I want you to do everything he's asked you to do. But your purpose, the primary focus of your purpose, I want to present to you today, it's not as much about doing as you think. Some of you are like, I don't believe you. Okay, just, let's just keep going in Luke. I won't even turn the page in my Bible. I'll just go down two verses. As Jesus and the disciples were continuing on the way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where Martha lived. Her sister sat on the floor while he taught, but Martha was distracted by the di- big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, this seems unfair. My sister is just sitting here while I do all the work. Jesus, I am doing stuff for you. But Jesus was like, awesome. Thanks for for doing stuff for me, but that's 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 not why I created you. You you think... 
You think God created you to do stuff? Oh, but Charles, you you forgot about the Garden of Eden. Like in the Garden of Eden, we were doing stuff for God. Like we were, okay, okay, let's go to the Garden of Eden. So we're in the garden, Adam and Eve, um, and they have a big assignment that God asked them to do. It's naming the animals. It's a lot of doing. But do you think God needed Adam to name the animals? You think God created everything and then got tired and thought, I need to create an entire species to do stuff for me. Oh, because this is where we think that God needs us. Like, this is where you think God needs me to do things for him because he's not strong enough to go to my school and transform it, so he needs me to do it. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to help you with it. God did not create humanity because he needed help doing stuff. He took six days and did the most doing anybody would ever do. He created everything. God did not create this entire world and then say, I'm going to create a species called human doers. You're, you're a human being. You're, you want to know why God created you? Your purpose is not to do for God. Your purpose is to be with God. I'm telling you, and when I realized this, it took away so much pressure because you think if I got to make sure I'm doing all the right stuff for God and I got to go to youth X and I got to worship and read my Bible 10 times a day and I got to know all the new songs and I got to lead my whole school to Christ and I got to, yes, 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 those are all good things, but God did not create you because he couldn't do those things himself. God, God created everything. Not because he needed you to do something. He wanted to just be with you. God created Adam because he he just wanted somebody to be with. Because it's very clear that he didn't need help doing. He he created the stars, the, the galaxies, parts of the sea that we've never discovered. God's God's got doing under control. And sometimes when we get so caught up with purpose and, and we get in spaces like this, and I remember coming to youth conferences and thinking, I'm about to go do all this stuff for God, and I'm going to save the whole school. And I don't know why I talked like that, but, <laughs> but what happened is, is I started performing for God. My relationship with God was about what I could do for him. So then you know what happens when you mess up in your doing? You think there's something wrong with you. You think you're out of purpose when you're not doing. You think you're not in purpose when you're not doing stuff. If I'm not doing stuff for God, then I'm out of purpose. But God, the purpose of your life isn't to do stuff. It's to be with God. Now, some of you are thinking, Charles, but we're, st- we're supposed to, yes, we're supposed to do things. There are things, but I want to help you with two words today. Um, it, it, there's two words, purpose and calling. Purpose and calling. I want to help you with these two words today um, because I believe they'll help you a lot. The scripture, I'm going to read it again. It's uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, thir- or Philippians 4.13, but this is in the amplified version. That's what it says. I can do all things which he has called me to do. So this scripture is an excuse to do whatever you want and say, God told you to do it. There's a caveat. I can do all things. Well, not all things, just the things he's called me to do through him who strengthened me and empowered me not to do whatever I want, but to fulfill his purpose. So there's two words, purpose and calling. I didn't give you these notes because I'm just kind of going right now, but the, the, there's two words, calling 
is your specific assignment. Calling is about assignment. Calling is about what, 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 what is the specific thing that God has asked you to do. And what happens is, is God uses calling to reveal purpose. So what happens is, is God will call you to do something. Just like somebody calls you, hey, do you want to come to the house? Hey, do you want to go out? Do you want to go come over and play video games? Whatever the call is. And when God calls you to do something, he may call you to, to start, hey, I want you to really be committed to the faith. I want to call you. I want you to step out in your school and start praying every single day at 7 a.m. I want you to start. I want you to step out and start getting in this, in this group and meeting with these people. He may call you to do things. But the end goal of the call is not just the call. The end goal is that in your doing, you would be becoming. Purpose is about being and becoming. It's about as I'm doing what God asked me to do, he's developing me into who I've always been created to be. Again, I, I, I want to, again, these are things that you may feel like, okay, I feel like I'm supposed to um, really start waking up at a certain time and reading my Bible every single day for five minutes at this time. That is the calling. That is the thing he's asking you to do. But the goal is not because he wants you to be good at reading. It's because he wants to spend time with you and be with you. So as you answer the call to do what he's asked you to do, you're being and becoming who he's created you to be. This is the tension that a lot of us have to manage is, what is God calling me to do that will reveal the ultimate purpose he has for me? And the ultimate purpose, again, is not about the doing. It's about being. And I, I think it, it kind of culminates in the life of Jesus. I look at the life of Jesus and I, going down this train of thought, I have to ask, did Jesus come to this earth to do? Like, Jesus, well, you can, you can make a case for it. Jesus did a lot of stuff. He healed people. He, one of the doings he did was dying on the cross. But there's a scripture that says in a very specific way that when I read it, it, it changed a lot. It says this, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. God made him who had no sin to be sin so that we might become the righteousness of Christ. It doesn't say, so God made Jesus to come to the earth to heal people. God made Jesus to come to deliver. He did all of those things. But Jesus' main goal was not to do. It was to be. It was to be sin for me and you so that we might become. The purpose of your life is not caught up in what you're doing. And this is why you don't have to feel behind on anything. This is why Instagram will lie to you and you will feel like I'm not doing as much as they are. I, I don't get to travel where they're traveling. I'm not, I didn't get to, I'm not doing enough. And then we get caught up in this rat race of I need to do more for God and I need to make sure I'm reading more of my Bible and I need to, and then it becomes about performance and you're checking off a checklist when God says, I I did not do all of this because I needed worker bees. <laughs> Where did we make church and Christianity about us being the focus? It's about what we're going to do for God, how we're going to, I'm going to make sure that I can do this. God says, listen, baby, I, I, can, I can actually do it by myself. I, re I hate to break it to you, and I say this with all the love in my heart. God doesn't need you really to do anything. He, he doesn't like, it's not God. It says if you don't sing, he'll make the rock start screaming. <laughs> he said, I, I don't like, I spoke through a donkey because I couldn't get somebody to like, if I need somebody to do something for me, you really don't have a choice because I gave you the breath that you're breathing. So it's not about I need you to do anything for me. But he loves you so much. I, um, 
I told you we have two and a half kids, and <laughs> the other one's still cooking. Um, the beauty of my relationship with my two-year-old Arlo, and the reason we have the joy of being parents, and the reason we had kids, was not focused around that I needed a two-year-old to do stuff for me. But why do we think that our Father, God, put you on the earth because he needed help doing stuff? Uh, you know, our, I love Arlo. He's the sweetest kid. He's, like, so sweet. He's, like, he just, he literally wakes up in the morning and just, like, rubs his face on your face. Like, he's just, like, a little teddy bear. My girl Luna, she boxes for a living. She has a whole other life. She's one year old. She's a boxer. Uh, but... There's nothing really Arlo can do for me. I ask him to do stuff like, hey, could you go get a diaper for your sister? Hey, could you go like, get me a wipe? Hey, buddy, could you go get daddy's keys out of your bed when you threw them in there? Could you do? But it's not because I couldn't do it myself. It's not. It's because, well, one day you're going to have to do stuff. And so I'm trying to kind of teach you stuff. But really, like the goal of this relationship is not what you could do for me. The goal of the focus of my love is not that you can do anything for me. It's actually that I want to do everything for you. I want to, I just want to be with you. And God is saying to you tonight that you don't have to be so anxious about what you're going to do. The Bible says it this way. Tomorrow has enough worries about itself. Don't worry. What you're going to do, God will get it done. But when you realize that you were created, you were not created to be an employee for Jesus. <laughs> Your value is not in how much of the Bible you can read. Please read your Bible. Please, please, please. It's like a pastor box. I have to check, make sure I tell you, read your Bible. But the goal of reading your Bible is not to say, I read my Bible. The goal of, of, of reading your scripture isn't so you can post the version scripture of the day and everybody can see that you did what you were supposed to do. The goal of answering the call and stepping out and starting that thing that you feel like you're supposed to start isn't so that everybody can say, look at what they did. The goal is, God says, I just really kind of create spaces and I kind of make up stuff just to really be with you. I make up random jobs all the time for Arlo. Stuff we don't have to do. Hey, buddy, want to go walk over here and help dad? You want to carry the trash cans to the end of the street? Yeah, daddy. He's on the back of the trash can like. I didn't need, I didn't, I didn't need his help. I just... I wanted to spend time with my boy. I wanted, I just wanted him around. And I came to tell you tonight that God loves you so much that he will make up stuff. He made up not only stuff, but everything you see. He made all of it up, not for him. Think about that. He created galaxies, and it wasn't for, he created all this stuff. Not because, he created it because he said, I just want to make up something, and then I'm going to create this being just to, just because I, I just made it up because I just wanted, I just wanted to be with you. I just wanted, I wanted to see you enjoy my creation. I wanted to just spend time with you. I just wanted to see you grow. I wanted to see you flourish. I just wanted to... Tonight, I would hope that you would leave knowing that you don't have to, you don't have to fall subject to the pressure of your potential. All the stuff you could do, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you could do. There's a lot of stuff you could, there's a lot of places you could live 
There's a lot of schools you could go to. There's a lot of sports you could play. Yeah, you've got tons of potential. And if anybody's ever lied to you and told you different, they're just not true. You have tons of stuff on the inside of you. But your value is not on showing everybody else all those things. It's the same God who spoke the stars into existence. He wants to spend time with me. You know how that crazy that feels? You know how great this like, man, he really just, he just really wants to hang out. I remember the first time Abby asked me to hang out. I was like, dang, girl, you want to hang out with me? And God says, I just, I just want to be with you. That's all I want. I'll ask you to do stuff. You may learn, you may fail. But the reason you don't have to worry about failing, it really wasn't about what you were doing. You can't really fail because the goal was not to do. The goal was that you're with me. So if you did what I asked you to do and it didn't go well, it's all right. If you stepped out and people made fun of you, it's all right. If you tried to sing for the first time and it wasn't as great as you thought it was going to be, it's all right. If you decided to do something new and try to submit that part to God and you made a mistake, it's all right because he said, I will be with you even until the end of the age. God's goal. And the question is to be or not to be. Will you take time just to be? We take time just to be with God. Not to do for God. You'll do a lot for God. I believe that. You really will. But God just, he said, I want you to, I want you to be with me. Would you close your eyes for a moment? Not out of religion, but just out of a moment to focus. If you're watching online, wherever you are, um, I'm believing in this moment that God wants to speak specifically to you. Specifically, uniquely. And uh, there's somebody in here, maybe a couple people, maybe watching online, that you felt that pressure. Maybe even a little anxious, maybe a little worry, maybe a little like, ah, I just hope I can live up to what everybody thinks of me. I hope I can live up to the pressure my parents put on me. I hope I can live up to the pressure I put on myself. I hope I can live up to, to reach my potential. I hope I can do it. And in this moment, you just need to take a deep breath. Everybody, would you do that with me? Just take a deep breath in and breathe out. Right now, God, we are, um, we're breathing in the fact that you don't ask us to do, but simply to be. And because our purpose is being, <laughs> there's no need to compare. Because there's nobody that can be us. There's nobody that can be with you like we can be with you, Lord God, because there's not another us on this planet, Lord Jesus. So right now, I pray over every single person in this room. Lord, I pray right now that your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, will bring a peace that surpasses all understanding to guard their hearts, their minds, and their soul, Lord Jesus. I pray right now that anybody who's struggling with anxiety or worry or what am I going to do or, or the, the pressures of what could happen in life, Lord Jesus, I just pray an ease over them right now, Lord Jesus. I pray that your loving arms would surround them, Lord God. Lord, I feel like they, they would feel right now just the warm hug of their father, Lord Jesus, saying it's okay. You don't, you don't have to be so focused on doing. You don't have to be so focused on all the things you can do for me. Some people in here, maybe they've tried to do stuff for God and they feel like they failed or they missed their moment or maybe if I would have done it right or if I would have practiced more or if I would have tried harder, if I was just better, maybe there's something wrong with it. No, that is a lie. Lord, I thank you that before they were in their mother's womb, you saw them, Lord Jesus. You have a plan and a, and a purpose for their life, Lord God, to prosper them and not to harm them, Lord Jesus. I thank you that they would know that they're the righteousness of Christ, Lord God, that they would know that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives on the inside of them. Lord, right now we're thanking you that your promise was not to do a lot for us, but to always be with us. Lord, I thank you right now, just even in a moment of reflection, Lord God, that you've always been with us. There wasn't a moment 
There wasn't a moment. Lord, I thank you. I see you right now. There's some of you in this room. There are moments you're thinking, you're thinking right now. It's like, well, God kind of wasn't with me in that. And he's saying, yeah, I was there. I was there. That moment where my parents were yelling at each other and I was kind of like in the corner. They didn't know I could hear them. Yeah, he said, I, I was, you didn't see me, but I was there. That moment where I tried to, 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 to really step out and do the right thing and I made the mistake and now I feel all the shame of that. He's like, yeah, I was, I was there. God, I thank you that your love is filling this room. Lord, I pray right now that you would reveal specific callings to people, specific things that people are supposed to do in this next season, Lord God, that they wouldn't be overwhelmed by all the things they need to do, Lord God. But I pray right now you're speaking to people, Lord Jesus, that you're, you're speaking to them about what the next step is, Lord Jesus. They don't need all the steps. They don't know, know, need to know exactly where it's going, but they just need the next one. Lord, I pray right now by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would download the next step, Lord Jesus, the next thing they're supposed to do, Lord God. I thank you that they would have clarity, Lord Jesus. I, thank you, God. Right now, I want to do something. Um, if you are in this room and you feel like you struggle to hear God's voice, like you feel like, I feel like sometimes I hear him, but sometimes I don't. And I kind of like, I get stuck like in the middle. Like I feel like, man, was that God or was that me or what? If you feel like you're in this room and you struggle to hear God's voice, I just want you to come down to the front right now. Come down to the front right now. It may not be everybody. If you say, no, that's not me. It's okay. Don't like force yourself to come up here. I'm not going to give you a prize for coming up here. This is just a serious moment where you say, I just feel like sometimes I can't always hear exactly what he's trying to say. If there are leaders in the room, if you could kind of, everybody who uh, is, you, you say you feel like you struggle with that, if you could come up as close as you can, and if there are leaders or volunteers or um, even other students that you feel like you wanna kind of help in this moment, if you could just get behind everybody, just stand behind them, just kind of get in the, even on this back row and just keep pushing in, keep getting close. The Bible says, um, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not listen to. I always thought that scripture was, was just, um, it was a good scripture, like made sense. It's like, oh yeah, Jesus is saying they, they know my voice and they won't listen to a stranger. But I realized that that was a declaration over you, not a hope. It wasn't a, my, my sheep, one day they'll come to learn. No, he's saying my sheep, they know my voice and they will not listen to a stranger. I'm telling you right now, you may not feel like it. You may not know it, but you know God's voice. He's spoken to you before. The re you're in this room because you've heard something tell you. Maybe you should go. You're watching right now because you felt so You know God's voice. And I'm praying right now that you would hear it more clearly than ever before. If you would just begin to pray with me right now. Lord God, I thank you. And you would just lift your hands right where you are. Lord, I thank you here and online as they're watching, Lord God, that every person in this room and under the sound of my voice, Lord God, that your voice is becoming clear right now, Lord Jesus. I thank you. Lord, I break away the lies that would say I can't hear or that would break the lies that you'll never, or that's too weird, or what, what is it going to be, or how are you going to know it's God? I break those lies right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that you are raising up a generation that would know your voice, Lord God. You are raising up a generation that would hear the soft whispers of God, Lord God, that they would hear and know your voice. I pray over every student in this room, Lord God, that the steps of a righteous man the step of a righteous woman. They are ordered by God. I pray that every student right now, I pray that you would begin to speak to them. Just breathe fresh wind on them, Lord God. Tell them that they're valued. Tell them that they're loved, that you see them, that you have a call for their life, that you have a plan for their life, Lord Jesus. I pray right now, Lord God, that your spirit, the same spirit that got Christ out of the grave is standing up on the inside of them and they are starting to feel something, y'all. Listen, I'm telling you, that thing you're feeling right now, that's God on the inside of you. I thank you that your voice is standing up on this generation that no longer will they shy back. No longer will they second guess. Second guess, get out of here. Devil, you have no place in their mind. Devil, you have no place in their thoughts. Devil, you have no place in their emotions. Devil, you have no place in their family. I thank you right now that God, you are speaking. Speak to your children. Thank you right now, Lord Jesus, that your presence would rest in this place. Thank you for your presence resting in this place. 
Rest right now, Lord Jesus. Just rest on your children. Rest, 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 Lord God. Sweet rest, Lord Jesus. Just, just a breath of fresh air, Lord God. Just rest right now in this moment. Lord, I pray right now that our lives would ultimately be centered around not what we can do, but on simply being with you. Lord, I pray right now, every head still by, every head still bowed, every eye still closed. There's some of you in this room, um, and as you evaluate your relationship with God, maybe you're watching online, you're thinking, man, I don't, I, I haven't really felt like God was there. I don't feel like I'm as close to him as I could be, or I don't really know if I have a relationship with God. Here's a beautiful thing. You don't have to do anything to get it. This is where the church has got it wrong. They told you you had to stop drinking, stop smoking, stop lying, stop cussing, stop doing a bunch of stuff, and then God would help you. But when you go to the hospital, they don't say, all right, bandage your arm up, stop bleeding, get it together, and then the doctor will come see you. No, when you show up just, just there, when you show up just open, just... I'm bleeding a little bit. Hey, I'm, I'm hurting a little bit. I'm a little insecure. I'm a little, I don't really know who I am. Hey, I'm, 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 God says, perfect. If you would just come to be with me, I'll help you with all that other stuff. If you're in this room, if you're watching online, you want to accept Jesus into your life. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to qualify. There's not an application process. It's just a simple decision to say, God, I surrender. Right now, if you just close your eyes, if you're in this room, if you're watching online, you say, God, I just, I want to surrender. I want to accept you into my life. I'm going to do something real simple. I'm going to pray a prayer. I'm going to ask you to repeat it after me. I'm going to ask everybody in this room watching online, no matter where you are, you may have prayed this prayer before, but we're all going to pray this prayer together for those who are doing it for the first time. You need to know that your walk with God it's not about doing it by yourself. You don't have to do this alone, whether you're in a whole other country by yourself. You're not alone because we are a body. We are a family. And uh, everybody right now, would you repeat this prayer of me after me? Say, dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for just wanting to be with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for laying down my li your life to save mine. I surrender, change my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey, listen, if you just made that decision, that's the best choice you could ever make. And uh, God's so proud of you. We're so proud of you. Hey, listen, when you, uh, when you leave tonight, when you go back to wherever you're going to, some of you are gonna stay on the stream all throughout the night, um, walk a little lighter. lighter knowing I don't have to carry the pressure of everything I'm going to do. I don't have to like carry the weight of all this. No, I could, God just wants to be with me. And here's the beautiful thing. He'll be with you wherever you are. You can be walking into your home. That's kind of crazy. And it's like, ah, I don't really, but you just say, God, and he's like, yeah, what's up? I'm right here. You can, you can walk into a tough moment where you don't know what to do, where you're about to do. You can say, God, hello. He says, yep, I'm right here. God just wants to be with you. I want to ask us, we're going to sing that song one more time, reminding ourselves that not for a moment was I forsaken. Like, God has always been with me. He's always been with me and will always be with me. Wherever you go, the Bible says like this, neither height nor death, neither angels nor demons, nothing to come or to go, nothing can separate us from the love of God. So I want us to sing this out with all we've got. I want us to sing it out and worship God that not for a moment was I forsaken. That God has always been with me. The Lord is in this place. Come on, let's worship together right now. Come on, just sing this out. The Lord is in this place. Come on, not for a moment, not for a moment. We believe in the youth. Hey, that's some content from YouthX21. The week was absolutely crazy. We got more coming your way. Just make sure you like and subscribe and hit that bell so that you get the notification for all the content we're posting. That's right. We love you. Peace.